I've been on the phone with 911. I've been trying to come out there. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well, having a good day so far. I'm here with our little Finley. <laughs> he literally follows me everywhere. We all know this and we all love him. You guys, I have got to find a new groomer for him here in Florida because he has not been groomed since we moved here. And this hair is just getting a little too long. It's kind of hard for him to see. We also are gonna take a bath today, <laughs> little buddy. We're a little grungy, but he's still stinking cute. I had to hurry and check in with you guys. So I've been working a little bit this morning and I have to run to a doctor's appointment. I'm actually going to the dermatologist, which I have never been to a dermatologist. You guys, is that terrible? Like I feel like I probably should have gone and got like checkups and different things like that, but I've never been. Maybe someone else out there has never been or has done the same thing, make me feel not alone, but I probably should have gone, you know, every few years to get checked in, make sure everything's good, but I haven't. Sadly, there is something you guys, I'm a little bit worried about. You may have noticed it from our vlogs, but right here is this little dry spot. It's like raised and it's red and it's kind of flaky. And I have had it for the, probably about the past six months. And at first I thought it was, like an acne scar maybe, you know, when you have a zit and it kind of takes a while to go away. I thought maybe that's what it was, but I don't think that's what it is. It's like the weirdest thing because it's basically like flat. It's not raised, but it won't go away. It's always there. I've like tried, I exfoliate, I do tons of stuff. And so I'm thinking it may be something else. And actually someone in my family recently had something similar on their face. I was talking to her about it and she was like, I would go get that checked out because she went and it ended up being pre-cancerous. So she hadn't gotten it removed. It was a type of skin cancer. I don't know all the details yet. I'm sure I'll find that all out when I go to the dermatologist. But if she wouldn't have gone, it would have turned into cancer. So that makes me kind of nervous. The minute I talked to her about that, I was like, okay, I need to make an appointment now. I've been waiting for this doctor's appointment. It takes a while to get into dermatologist, which I didn't know that, but it does. So I've been waiting quite a few weeks to get into the appointment. So I'm really excited to just go meet with him and find out what this is. And then also probably just have him look at my entire face and skin and see how I'm going. I mean, I hate to admit it, but when I was younger, I didn't always put on sunscreen. As I gotten into my 20s and later, I definitely did. But you know, when you're young and you just wanna be in the sun, I do use a fake tanning spray. So if you're thinking, well, you look really tan, it's fake. I love the fake tanning sprays. That way you're not damaging your skin. And I always try and put on SPF now, and I have been for quite a few years, but I think maybe this is cause from, you know, when I was younger, 18, 19, 20 in those years. So anyways, I think it'll be good to go get it checked out, see what's going on. So I'm gonna go ahead, get in the car, head over there, and I may try and vlog in there, or, or maybe I'll just give you the update, but I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Today is the first day in a very, very long time that I have actually felt healthy enough to get out, go out, and have some fun. So I'm actually here with my business partner and friend, Garrett Swenson. He's the man. We are on his jet skis again. We're gonna go out just for a little bit, then go work. So these are the two jet skis that he has. He has this one right here, and then he has that one over there. And we have a pretty good system right now where he will essentially back his truck into the back here. I'll hop on and basically pull off the jet skis. That's the fun part. So I get to pull them off and then I have to park them, tie them up. I did a pretty poor job right there tying them up just because we're just about to leave. But then after that, I come over here, walk over there and there's a little tiny ladder right there that I climb up, go all the way over, hop on and I do it all over again with the other jet skis. But anyway, we're gonna go all the way down here, take a right and then head on out into the ocean. <laughs> okay guys, the last time we came here, the cruise ships, we 
could see, but they were pretty far off. This time, the cruise ship is literally right there. <laughs> that is crazy how close these cruise ships are. So funny thing, when I was a little kid with my family, I actually went on a cruise. We went on this very one. That is so cool. That is crazy. That thing is huge. I know I've said that like a hundred times, but seriously, it's like one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> <laughs> not exactly sure I just got a message from my husband via a text saying he sent out an emergency SOS he's jet skiing right now so it came to my phone because I'm an emergency contact so I, I'm not sure if he's contacted you guys already or what I'm supposed to do in this situation yeah it sent me a pin there's a location but it doesn't give me any coordinates it's out in the middle of the water have you ever heard of something like this where the emergency contact gets a message that they are trying to place an emergency SOS call? Have you ever heard yeah, of that? Um, that's part of the iPhone. I know that's part of the iPhone setup, ma'am. And what you need to leave with things like the ocean, we're definitely doing these coordinates. I, I thought it would have gave you that, but it just didn't. There's no way us and to wait to locate or track you. Should I drive there? Because, like, it's letting me, it has directions. I Okay. It says he made in the message, it says he's made the emergency call from that approximate location. Does that mean that you guys would have gotten that? No, we wouldn't have gotten it. It just comes to me. It just. Okay. Then should I drive out? I'll drive out there and then do I call 911 back or who should I call? Okay, thank you. Okay, bye. Oh my gosh, I've got fun in the world. You sent a, a SOS from the middle of the ocean to my phone saying it was an emergency. Oh. You're okay? Yeah. I've been on the phone with 911 and been trying to come out there. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I know. My phone dialed you? It sent me a text saying that you placed a SOS emergency call. And it came to me because I'm the emergency contact. Oh my gosh. Uh, I have no idea how I did that. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm glad you're okay, but oh my gosh. Are you wow. still on the water? Yeah, no, we're totally fine. I have no idea how I did that. I'm so sorry. Uh, okay, well, I gotta call some people back. I've been trying to get a hold of you and Garrett. I am so sorry. I just saw it bringing on my. Okay, bye. Uh, love you. Love you. Oh my gosh. You guys, I just had to pull over to the side of the road. 
holy cow. I don't think I've ever been that scared. I did not I did not know what to do. I've I've never seen something like that before. Um maybe I should back up and tell you. I was going to see that dermatologist for this spot I was telling you about and all of a sudden I get on my phone. I'm literally like checking in with the lady and I get on my phone this message. It says emergency SOS. Jared Bingham has made an emergency call from this approximate location. You are receiving this because Jared is listed as your emergency contact. And then it shows him like out in the middle like of the water. Oh my gosh. Sorry. I'm just so... <sighs> my heart is racing. I think it's just like adrenaline pumping. And I was like, what do you do with that? Like, I've never seen that. Does that mean like he called 911? Does that mean I'm supposed to call 911? Like, what does that mean? And so anyways, I was like, hey, I have to leave. And I ran out and you guys saw I, her intern on the vlog camera as I called 911. And I mean, the lady, she was doing the best she could. But I, I mean, when I click on his location, it, it literally gives me no coordinates or anything it just has a pin and when i click on info there's literally no coordinates or anything like that like how scary is that and it's 20 minutes away so i started calling jared to see if i could get a hold of him and then you you guys heard that he picked up the phone because i tried calling him a few times when i came out to the parking lot to see if I could get a hold of them and it kept going straight to voicemail, straight to voicemail. And I like, I don't know what that means. Does that mean your phone's off? Is it dead? Like what is going on? Holy cow, you guys. I thought I was gonna have to drive out there and then have an officer come out and like we're gonna have to go search for him. I had no idea what could have like happened. And then, <laughs> I mean, I was so relieved when I heard him pick up and saying, he heard me crying and he was like, are you okay? What's going on? And so that made me think, okay, he's okay, but. Oh my gosh, that was like the craziest experience. I felt helpless. Like, here my husband is in the ocean, 20 minutes away. 911 doesn't know how to get to him. I have to drive out to him. Like, I tried, he's out there with his friend Garrett. I tried calling, I don't have Garrett's number. So I tried calling Sean, Jared's brother, seeing if he had it, he wasn't picking up. Like, I just felt helpless. Like, I, that was, that was really scary. Oh my gosh. Whew. Anyways, okay, I'm just gonna take a breath. Everything's good. Jared's still out on the ocean. He said he was still on the jet skis. We're good. I'm gonna go ahead, drop the vlog. I'll have to figure out my appointment another day, but glad my sweet hubby is okay and safe. So let me know if you guys have ever experienced that, getting an SOS message like that. The, the iPhone, I've never even heard of that. That's really cool to think, but obviously if it can be a mistake, that's not good either. So, okay, we'll check in with you guys in a little bit. All right guys, we just had a pretty intense scare, literally that happened right this second. My phone somehow set off an emergency SOS while we're riding. I don't know how it happened. It must have been while the thing was bouncing, but it's inside of here. I'll show you real quick. So the phone goes inside of here in between these two like styrofoam things. We didn't know she was calling because our phones are inside these little cubbies right here. Luckily, I felt something vibrating on my wrist. I answered it and I was just like, oh, hey babe, how's it going? And she was in tears. I didn't know what was going on. I was trying to figure out what was going on with her. I thought she got in a car accident. I cannot imagine how she was feeling. My dad's calling me now because it's gonna be the same story, but I gotta answer this. This is, wow, scary, but thank goodness I'm safe. <laughs> Jared's alive, thank heavens. Oh my gosh. 
It was bad. So I had these emergency contacts. I had Brittany listed, obviously number one. Then I had my parents. And so right after I got the phone off the phone with Brittany, my dad calls me. Wait, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> I know. So they got the same thing? <laughs> yeah, they got the same thing. <laughs> my dad, he calls me, he's like, hey, bud, because I, I answered. I was oh, like, so he answered for his dad. I answered for you. But I went to voicemail, you guys. I tried calling before I called 911. I called him probably five times and it went straight to voicemail, straight to I voicemail. Have, so that made me even more worried. I had no idea what was going on, like zero. Oh, clearly, because when I answered, I didn't turn on the vlog camera when I first answered, but he's like, hey, babe. And I was like, at that point, you guys, I think my adrenaline, like I was holding it together when I talked to the 911 dispatcher because I was like, okay, hey, Brittany, stay calm. If they can't understand me, then they're not gonna be able to help me. So I was like super cool, calm, collected on that. But then after yeah. I hung up with them, when I'm like on my way to go meet a police officer at where Jared was last seen, <laughs> I was awful. like, Literally, my adrenaline was pumping. I was like, I had the worst feeling. Like, it was terrible. And then I was like such in a weird state earlier, you guys, with so many emotions. But basically on the way, I was like, hey, I'm gonna keep trying to call him, keep trying to call him. And he did pick up and he's just like, hey, babe. And I was like, <laughs> at that point, all You're my emotions. You're not dead, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> all my emotions, I just started bawling. He's like, are you okay? And he's like, Wait, and he was saying how he thought something was wrong with me because I was crying yeah. and he couldn't really understand me. So I couldn't really understand her. So my phone was like, as you guys saw, it was kind of like tucked in between these like two little cushions and it was like snug in there. So I have no idea how this distress signal got sent out. It happened to be stopped right then, which was nice. So I just answered, I was like, oh, hey, Britt, how's it going? Anyway, she's bawling. I had no idea what was going on. I thought she got in a car accident. I thought like something was wrong with like the doctor's appointment. I didn't know what was going on. So I was like, just so scared. And obviously I hadn't had a chance yet to even look at my phone. So I didn't know what was going on. And then she told me what happened. And anyway, it you was guys, funny. It, it, it was, was bad. It was not funny. <laughs> this was not it's funny. funny I was like, <laughs> it was not, I, it, it was, was scary. Funny. It was really scary. <sighs> We're all good. He's he's good, he's alive, which I'm grateful for. Honestly, I wanted to wring his neck when he was just like, hey babe, I was like, like, cause your first thought is, okay, he's okay, but then it's like, what are you doing? Like, do you know what you just put me through? <laughs> oh. I feel so bad cause she missed her doctor's appointment. Yes, me. and I've had that schedule, as I told you guys, for so long, but I haven't even called I the back, I haven't called the doctors, I literally, just was like, hey, I have an emergency, I have to go. I was in the waiting room and I just like left. So they probably were like, what in the world is going on with this thing? I feel but so bad. It's okay. Hey, if you learned anything from this, no, there is that distress code on the iPhone. Yeah. It can happen. I can definitely see how it could, you know, be really useful when yeah. used right and when it's yep. a real emergency, but it definitely causes a lot of stress. stress if used wrongly oh, yeah. <laughs> and panic. All is good in the Bingham house, you guys. I think I'm gonna close the vlog because yeah. I don't think I can uh, mentally take anything. I've like, had I a know. permanent headache since that. I think Brittany needs, needs a break for the rest of the day. <laughs> I do. But anyway, you guys, we love you all so much. Thank you for watching today's video, for being part of our family. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and we will see you all next time. See you guys, love ya, bye. bye.